But let's talk to um, elections aftermath of the uh, general election this year. The Independent National Electoral Commission has clarified impressions raised among some sections of the public that the commission received huge sums of money from development partners for the 2023 election. INEC chairman Mahmoud Yakubu told civil society organizations that the commission did not receive any direct funding or cash support from international development partners. Rather, their support was totally indirect through civil society organizations and implementing partners working on elections. He made this clarification at an event to review the 2023 general election. The correspondent Habid Alawal reports. <laughs> A post-2023 general election survey recently conducted by Situation Room has exposed a significant dip in citizens' confidence in the Independent National Electoral Commission. This year, citizens queried the ability of INEC to conduct a credible elections in the country. This distrust was fueled by fake news, misinformation and disinformation. In the light of upcoming off-cycle governorship elections in Kogi, Imo and Bayelsa State, in November 2023, civil society organizations believe the shortcomings experienced during the general elections of February and March 2023 should be thoroughly scrutinized. At this meeting with major civil society organizations, INEC listed some of the challenges it encountered during the elections and how it affected its optimal performance. The severe cash and fall situations were compounded by the perennial insecurity nationwide. Their impact on our deployment plans, compounded by the behavior of some of our own officials in the field, made logistics management particularly challenging. The deployment of thugs by some political actors made election day administration difficult in a number of places. While voter accreditation using the bimodal voter accreditation system was very successful. For the 2023 general election, the commission received 538 requests for accreditation as observers. However, only 67 observer groups, 62 of which are domestic and five foreign, have submitted their observation report. Out of 228 observer groups, this is um, not very good for us from civil society. Only 67 observer groups have sent in their reports. I will encourage my colleagues that we try as much as possible. The effort that we put into applying for accreditation, we should also make that effort to ensure that we send in our reports. Because over the years, I have noticed that the recommendations that we put into our reports are taken on by INEC. The performance of the technology deployed is also in review. It will form the basis of engagement with stakeholders for necessary improvement. Habib Alawal, TVC News, Abuja. The Chinese Consulate General of the People of the Republic of China has restated the commitment of the Chinese government to constantly promote and sustain the mutual diplomatic relations between China and Nigeria. The Chinese consulate stated this during the inauguration of the first president of the Confucius Institute Alumni Association of Nigeria. Uh, we have that report, and after that report, we will bring you updates in business and sports. Stay with us. Thank you. Unveiling the association's plaque, which is the Maiden Student Association, the deputy director of Confucius Institute at the Namdi Azikiwe University urged the Chinese consulate general to induct Nigerians who completed their study of Mandarin in Nigeria and China into their fold. Also speaking, the Consulate General Yang Yunhin says the aim of Confucius Institute is to strengthen the cultural and traditional communication between both nations. The president of the association says the essence of the alumni is to improve network opportunities and promote the official Chinese language Mandarin in Nigeria. The Deputy Director of Confucius Institute at the University of Lagos says the institute will continue to offer scholarships to Nigerians willing to study Mandarin in order to foster bilateral relations between China and Nigeria. Um, this association is to promote exchange between Nigeria and China, and especially when it has to do with uh, education, 
and uh, we have a lot of other things that we have put in place. Uh, there are some kind of vocational trainings and a lot of things we are going to um, bring in that you know, we are going to have Chinese experts that are going to um, you know, uh, teach some of our people, uh, teach Nigerians, those that are willing, that want to learn some, um, some knowledge, they want to learn some technical skills in terms of vocational training. The members of this association, they uh, have uh, studied or worked or lived in China. So they know Chinese uh, history, culture very well, especially they speak Chinese very well. And uh, I think that uh, they can build the bridge for promoting uh, China-Nigeria relationship and the good cooperation in the future. And uh, I'm so glad that uh, today also come a lot of Chinese people, especially enterprises. So I think that uh, in the future they uh, can make a good uh, uh, cooperation to uh, depend uh, China and uh, Nigeria uh, mutual uh, relationship and uh, cooperation. Uh, the Alumni Association is a collaboration between uh, the Confucius Institute at the University of Lagos and also the Confucius Institute at Namdi Azikwe University. We aim to promote bilateral relationship and also to share experiences of our studying in China and to bring to the focus our experiences of civilization and culture and traditions that we have experienced in China. The main motive is to bring to Nigeria, what we have learned in China through science and technology and through experiences. Established first at the Namdi Azikwe University in 2007, followed by the University of Lagos in 2008, each branch of the Confucius Institute in Nigeria churns out hundreds of Mandarin speakers every year. Less than two other stories. Civil society organizations are urging Nigerian regulatory agencies, as well as the Federal Ministry of Health, to ensure a speedy implementation of graphic health warnings on all tobacco products. This comes after the expiration of a 24-month initial period, given as a rotation period to change graphic health warnings and messaging in line with the guidelines set by the National Tobacco Control Act 2015. And health correspondent Kemi Balogun has more details. There have been heightened concerns about the increase in the use of tobacco products in Nigeria. Even more worrying is the growing use of shisha among the younger population, in line with the National Tobacco Control Act of 2015 that requires manufacturers, importers, and distributors of tobacco products to put up graphic health warnings for a period of 24 months after which a new graphic warning and message is changed. But this change is yet to take effect, raising concerns across this room of tobacco control experts that the tobacco industry is making light of the policy. It is now one month since the one is expired. And as an alliance, we alerted our members in the FCT, Ebony, Kano, and Lagos states to monitor compliance because by now we expect that uh, new warnings will be on the tobacco parks. And it is shocking to reveal that, you know, compliance to a new warning is a flat 0%. Until maybe five, six years ago, we were dealing with just cigarettes. Now there are all sorts of things being consumed, especially by young people. In the US right now, they're dealing with an epidemic of vaping by high school students. Over three million US kids are puffing something. They equally believe that the introduction of graphic health warnings on tobacco products is an effective way to reduce tobacco use and its associated harm on citizens. We suspect and we believe that the industry, they know the implication of that. Most of us that know the former, the healthy and uh, the smokers lungs know that this one is more gory and will be more effective than that one. Experts believe that graphic health warnings can reduce the appeal of tobacco products, making them less attractive to young people, leading to a reduction on the amount of tobacco consumed by smokers and lowering the costs associated with treating tobacco-related diseases. Kemi Balogun, TVC News, Abuja.